So this past week, there was a big rap battle between Drake, the rapper, and Pusha T, the rapper. And as many of you know, um, some interesting things came out of the rap battle. But the thing that I wanted to talk about in particular was the image of Drake in blackface. So as many of you know, um, the cover art of Pusha T's diss to Drake, and this is the last development in the story we don't know whether or not drake will respond but the cover art in that was a picture of drake black and blackface so naturally the question coming from most people what possible excuse can you have as a black man especially being from canada and you know maybe not understanding the gravity of blackface not saying that they didn't have that there but blackface was something predominantly in the united states so what how how do you as a black man justify being in blackface in modern times? And his answer, which came out um, recently, was he said that this was a, a, a attempt to draw attention to the stereotypes that black men or black people in the entertainment industry are forced to um, assimilate into as a, in order to have a career. So him doing this photo spread was basically a way to bring um to basically say hey this is what we deal with to bring awareness to the situation and something that he was trying to do as an artistic expression of the anger that we feel with black people in america and the first thing i thought about when i read and seen the picture and also when i hear heard his response is it's so interesting how black people we like to memorialize racism and it's no, there's nothing wrong with remembering things that happen. There's nothing wrong with remembering blackface. There's nothing wrong with remembering um, lynchings, remembering Jim Crow, remembering Black Wall Street being burned down, remembering the, the Tuskegee experiment. There's nothing wrong with remembering those things. And if anything, we have to learn our history because if you don't know your history, then it can essentially do the same thing to you. And because you weren't aware that they were doing it in the past, you're going to allow it to happen in the present. I'm very sure that there are modern experiences of the um, modern examples of the Tuskegee experiment, but because people, some people are so trusting of the government, so trusting of doctors and trusting of uh, officials and professionals, they would never question them whenever they say, hey, we're giving you this treatment. They would never question and say, well, could you possibly be not giving me this treatment? Could you possibly be allowing me to die from something? So I think it's very important for us to remember those things. But when it comes to memorializing racism, there's a big danger in that. And the danger is that it sets this perception that this is something from the past instead of dealing with it in the present. So what I'm saying that to say is, why have a picture of blackface, something that was happening in the past? Probably the more powerful thing to have done is to explain how modern examples of blackface are actually happening today. So it's one thing to say blackface and to dress in blackface, but the more powerful thing is to say that if you look at a lot of movies of African people in America, a lot of times we are not taken seriously, especially inside of a lot of these movies that are like all white cast and one black token. So the one black token a lot of times will be comic relief. They're very very stereotypical. Um, and so the one black token will be the one who makes all the jokes, the one who might be the most illiterate, the one who might be um, most the most destructive in their personal life. They might have multiple relationships and no accountability to any of those relationships. That one black person will be an example of a lot of things, not necessarily blackface. And so I didn't understand how you being in blackface draws attention to that. If anything, why not have um, a picture or explain how blackface actually relates to these stereotypes, these modern stereotypes that we are forced to fit into. So when I, that not just this, but also um, there's a lot of memorializing in America. And I don't know if we realize it because we're in America, but more than a lot of other countries, America likes to focus on the past and kind of glorify the past. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with it, but when you're glorifying it in a way that doesn't deal with the present, then that's when it becomes wrong. So even um, a lot of people memorialize um, the lynchings. So if none of you know, there was a new museum that was created, and it was a, a museum of lynchings, and it was a, a very powerful image. 
but the and I, I haven't been to the museum but I hope in the museum that they don't just focus on the past because if we're just thinking about the past of lynchings, we're not paying attention to the fact that lynchings really never have stopped. All because someone has a, blue, a badge on does not necessarily mean that that person is justified in killing you. So if you are driven by the same racial motivation, if you're driven by the same hatred that the people in the Ku Klux Klan was, what is it that makes you shooting down a black man different than someone uh, taking a rope and killing that person um, 50 or 60 or 70 years ago. There's no real difference. The only difference is you think because you have a badge of authority that that legitima legitimizes you killing African people. So these are examples of things that if we get stuck in memorializing, memorializing blackface, memorializing lynchings, memorializing Jim Crow, how could you memorialize Jim Crow? You know, I've seen exhibits where it's like, oh, we have the black only sink and we have the white only sink. Okay, maybe it's not, doesn't exist like that today, but in a lot of ways, there are things that are white only. There are lots of things in the society that if you're an African person and um, you were born out of the, dias the um, transatlantic slave trade in, in particular, you were probably blocked from enjoying a lot of the things in America. So that, in that sense, there are a lot of things that are white only and there's a lot of things that are black only. There are a lot of experiences that are white only. There are a lot of experiences that are black only. Go into some of these boardrooms, go to places in Wall Street, go into some of these stores and see how differently you're treated, how differently you're looked at. All because it's not a water fountain that says it does not mean that the black only and white only thing has gone away. So I'm saying all this to say that we have to be very cautious of the, um, the reason why I personally think America glorifies its past so much. And I think the reason why it glorifies its past so much is because it wants to give the perception that the United States have changed, has changed. But the thing to remember is if the United States has changed, then the reason why black people were oppressed would have to have changed. And that is the reason why we were oppressed is because we were seen as an economic commodity. And in order to serve the the interest of white people, it was seen that we had to be used to serve their interests. So the question would be not whether or not it's blackface anymore, or not whether or not it's lynchings anymore. The question would be whether or not the fundamental economic relationship between Africans and whites has changed. And if you look at the wealth disparities, if you look at the rates of people who are in the projects, or if you look at health disparities, you look at education disparities, you look at housing disparities, you see that the economic relationship is still one of the ex exploiter and the one that's being exploited. So as long as that relationship exists, it doesn't matter what way racism evolves. It doesn't matter that it's no longer blackface and now that it's, um, you know, I guess acting a fool on movies and being the one person to be stereotypical, that doesn't, that, that those things don't matter. What matters is that the fundamental relationship that put us here in the first place, the relationship of us being economically used for the interest of white people, if that hasn't changed, then that means that the whole system is still set up to oppress us. And that's what really matters in the end. It's not about memorializing the past. It's about understanding the present, understanding the ways that racism has evolved and making that a point of conversation. So I say all this to say, I think it would have been more effective for Drake back then, because this is probably like the grassy Drake. This is what it looks like. It would have been more effective instead of so showing the stereotypes of black men. If he was really interested in doing that, I don't think it would have been good to have done blackface. I think that it would have been the best way to have more effectively done it to have is to have shown how it has evolved into now and how it is that these same things are are created out of the original finding of blackface but these things are essentially the same so maybe taking modern day caricatures of black people and we have many modern day caricatures of black people Medea being one of them um you know, look at certain Eddie Murphy movies you'll see a lot of caricatures why not explain why that is the same thing instead of just going in blackface and saying years down the line oh well this was because i wanted to bring awareness well no you didn't bring awareness now we're just looking at you like you're crazy so those are my thoughts on the whole blackface situation and i love to hear your thoughts and i will see you on another video